Hello and welcome. I am Nitin Gokhale and you are on Strat News Global. And with me today is Professor Bhaskar Ramamurthy, uh, Director of IIT Madras, and also uh, the Chairman of the uh, Telecom Standards Development Society of India, or uh, TSDSI, uh, as uh, it is called. It is uh, one of the uh, important uh, uh, organizations which uh, determines uh, what are the standards that should be applied for uh, telecom networks in India. And uh, of course, Professor Ramamurthy and uh, TSDSI also, uh, for the first time, uh, were represented, or India was represented on uh, what is called the ITU, uh, the International Telecom Telecommunication uh, Union, which determines uh, several uh, standards and uh, practices, best practices uh, worldwide. Uh, welcome, uh, Professor Bhaskar, uh, for this uh, discussion. Uh, in fact, um, we are. Thank you. Uh, in fact, uh, we first want to understand uh, from you uh, what does TSDSI do and also uh, what what is the importance of India uh, being uh, at the uh, global high table, if I may call it, of the telecom uh, sector. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Nitin. Glad to be on your show. So, you know, uh, first thing we must understand about telecommunications is that um, you know, it's like speaking to each other. If you don't understand the grammar and the vocabulary of the language I'm speaking in, you can't understand me. So when you want a phone to communicate to the tower, they have to speak an agreed upon language. We are talking about language in the world of signals, but it's a language. So you need what are called standards. You need protocols, you need standards. You can't just do it, you know, the, ha the handset cannot just be made any way and the towers, uh, equipment of the tower cannot just be made any way you like. And now with mobile telephony, you, are, you want to go global. You want this to work everywhere in the world. So you've got to have some kind of a global standard. Um, so there are uh, standards bodies in major uh, countries of the world who, who actually participate in creating these standards. And they, form, they get together and form a global standards forum in which they do this work. This standards forum right now is called 3GPP. It started with 3G. So it's called 3G Partnership Project. But they now don't expand it because we are now on to 5G already. It's 3GP. TSDSI was formed about five years ago in India. We were not going to any of these things. Uh, this is this is not uh, this is a quasi legal. It's not a really. It's a forum. It's not a body where sovereigns are represented. More right. companies. And uh, we were not uh, participating in this uh, uh, seriously till about five years ago, and then. Uh, Many of us spoke to the Indian government and said that we must form a standards body. TSDSI was formed. And it's always done as an autonomous, uh, industry-driven, academia-driven, not as a government uh, entity. So we formed yes, that yes. government's blessings. And uh, then we started participating in this 3GPP. We are one of the seven global partners. Many small countries don't participate in this. It's usually the Europe has one uh, you know, overall uh, organization, Japan, Korea, China, USA. Um, and US has two and uh, so on and uh, India has joined it. Now ITU on the other hand is a, is a, is a UN, UN body and it right. is uh, their sovereigns are members. India has always been part of ITU. India has always right. participated. Yes. But India in no, not, no organization from India had any contributions to make at ITU mm -hmm. till recently. Right. We used to mm -hmm. go there, we used to understand everything and we used to vote and we used to uh, absorb the global standards. This is the first time where uh, in 2016 or so, I think, we, uh, uh, TSDSI took a leadership and went to ITU uh, with the blessings of the Indian government right. and articulated very clearly that there is a very important requirement uh, that mobile telephone technologies standards are not addressing. Correct. Last 30 years, 3G, 4G, 2G, 3G. Yeah. And that is the requirement of our rural uh, areas. And uh, we were uh, we were heard, and people, a lot of countries supported us, and uh, we were able to insist, uh, um, make it that 5G standard, whatever it is, who have, you know, finally that's agreed upon, will meet a certain requirement, which was uh, titled low mobility, large cell. And why is that? Why why did you want that uh, the low mobility, large cell? Yeah. Standard. So, you know, um, uh, in the uh, 3G standard and 4G standard, for example, the rural use case that had to be met was that the phone should work from a vehicle moving at 120 kilometers per hour 
uh, even 300 kilometers per hour for bullet trains and uh, and along uh, the 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 movement will be along a highway and you know right. you have you have towers along the highway and it should work the main challenge there was making the connection uh, stable at high speed uh, from vehicle there was no requirement that you must be able to do a carpet coverage of large rural areas where like in like in of, india where yeah. huge populations live okay Correct. this is a sparse population high speed uh, application the rural highway application it was it was from basically from the point of view of the europeans and the uh, maybe the, the americans what they needed in fact they also have rural areas but you know their rural most of those countries have a landmass to population ratio which is very large compared to us and their uh, villages are large and really with mobile wireless telephony is very difficult there to cover rural areas the way we Correct. want to cover so they That's never right. attempted it actually they just spent money lay wires and connected the for their farms they really right. can't rural in fact even now rural wireless coverage in us is pretty poor okay mm. it's not easy to cover such a vast country uh, yeah. with wireless on the other hand in india we have population densities which are very high and we have no wire wireline and this is actually very inexpensive and if we we therefore are determined to provide not just voice but broadband coverage to our rural people in large with a population density of upwards of 300 people per square kilometer and you know over 4 5 6 kilometer 6 kilometer kind of coverage radius this Correct. was not existing in as a requirement even so it is not a requirement whatever coverage we have been getting in our rural areas is just incidental <laughs> It's not okay. quite because, because of the towers that are uh, that are visible or that are uh, put in uh, no, place. No, you put up the same technology which has been carefully architected for urban, and right. you put it up in rural areas, and what you get is what you get. Correct. There was no particular uh, focus yes. on the rural areas. Hmm. Now, when we went to ITU, we we looked at our uh, you know naturally we looked at ourselves uh, you know our own requirements primarily in India, and in India we have we had decided to lay this optical fiber to all the gram panchayats. right so we looked at the uh, the um, uh, distance of every village that will be connected to the tower at the gram panchayat uh and uh, we found that uh, if we cover 6 kilometers from the gram panchayat mm -hmm. more than 95% of india's villages will be covered so we actually wanted 6 kilometer coverage or inter site mm -hmm. distance as it's called of 12 kilometers right. we wanted mm -hmm. but in the mm -hmm. itu the, there was a give and take and negotiations and so on and finally we had to water it down to an inter site distance of 6 which is actually a coverage radius of only 3 kilometers as I a requirement see. okay because oh, you know you have, you have to get you have to get so many countries to agree and some of the western countries who are all you know this was really late you know 5g work standardization work had started in 2012 or so so this was in 2016 so there was a little reluctance to set such a grand challenge so they said they finally agreed we had to agree to that because you said at least something is better than nothing so yes. no that is a requirement but nobody says you can't exceed it so we went to 3gpp and said look why well, let's get 6 kilometers because that's what india wants but mm -hmm. you know 3 is enough to pass the itu's uh, tests okay. so um, itu requires only with itu's requirement we cover only 66% of our villages if you okay. don't exceed it so right. what then tsda said did was try to get into uh, get proposals into 3gpp for getting 6 km coverage and for that you had to do some fairly smart things in the in the standard and we tried to do it in a in a very very in a way that doesn't upset the entire you know whatever has been built up and so on architecture yeah. that's really what we did right so now uh, tell me i mean just for uh, the uh, people the viewers who are uh, listening to this conversation uh, when we look at uh, the roll out of 5g in uh, in coming months and years uh, where the trials are going to begin uh, soon is what we hear from the government or uh, from the industry uh, what is that what is it that india will have uh, unique uh, attributes uh, if at all and then those standards uh, how will india apply to uh, rural areas and the uh, the application of 5g uh, to the entire country so what has happened is uh, to complete the story that since uh, since 3gp you know when we took this proposal to 3gpp 3gpp again for various reasons did not incorporate everything that we wanted to get the 6 kilometers coverage so uh, so the standard that 3gpp has come finalized will probably give only about 3 3 and a half kilometer coverage won't give more than that mm -hmm. or maybe four i mean no it's not it's not easy to ex exactly say how much it will be it will depend on terrain and other thing but certainly right. comfort won't give six so we actually uh, in when the when when tsdsi 
adopted the same standard transposed it as we call it we are uh, we have the freedom to uh, enhance it and we actually added in some of the things that we wanted as a superset uh, right. to get the 6 kilometers coverage back and uh, so the tsdsi uh, took to itu a, 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 a an enhanced version of the global standard which mm -hmm. is which is same as the global standard in every way except that it has some addition additional capability and which will sure. work it will work uh, seamlessly with uh, with the global standard so you know mobile mobile phones will work everywhere and so on and this tsdsi uh, radio interface technology as itu calls it is right. this one of two radio interface technologies that has been tentative i mean it will be a formally approved uh, in the next meeting but it's tentatively approved all the right. technical work is over the other one being the 3gpp one we actually have uh, in, uh, tsdsi is actually science sponsored both mm -hmm. uh, and uh, because one is anyway a superset right. so with with, uh, when 5G gets deployed in India, I think it will be the same 5G as everywhere in the world. We'll, it'll have the, it'll have better speeds uh, than 4G. It will have, uh, uh, you know, a much higher and capacity. Mm -hmm. And uh, it'll also have a few other things which 4G didn't uh, have, uh, which will come a little later, which won't come on the first day, which is, I think, there's something called vehicle to uh, X communication. Which ve vehicles will be much better connected. I see. By the by, the time in a few years' time, you'll be doing everything from the vehicle which you can do from your office now. You know that's really what's going to happen. So, uh, and vehicles will also use this in for their own uh, navigation and other things with very mm -hmm. very tight, very tight performance constraints on reliability, uh, speed, uh, latency, and so on. So there yeah. are it, there are aspects of five G which I don't want to spend too much time on here, which are sure. not which are not there in four G. There's also mm -hmm. new frequency bands. Fundamentally, immediately, what people are going to see is better speeds, you know, better performance, better. Car. But what we would like, what we will see in India, yeah. is our rural areas, which also need all of this. Especially now, when the with the pandemic, we realized how important this is. Yeah. <laughs> rural areas hopefully will get carpet coverage and the same kind of broadband that we get in urban areas. This is really the key to what we are doing, at mm -hmm. at a very 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 very, very simple. Uh, but innovative changes and at very more uh, almost no cost increase that's the very there are many ways of doing these things of course if you really open up the whole thing and start uh, ab initio but we, that's not the way we can do it because as i said we have to be aligned with the global uh, standard we have to uh, you know we have to uh, leverage the economies of scale we can't go off on a limb and do our own thing but yeah, exactly you can't work in, yeah. you can't work in isolation i guess that's that's no, what you're trying you can't, to do. you can't do that you interoperability is the key word, I think. Interoperability is the key word. Yes, interoperability mm -hmm. and economies of scale. You know, you've got a, the same manufacturing ecosystem, global ecosystem mm -hmm. that makes stuff in the billions. You have to, you have to, uh, you have to leverage the same thing. Correct. So, can you also tell me something about the uh, Indian um, specific, India specific system that uh, the uh, academy is developing along with industry on the? 5G network. Uh, there is some end-to-end -end 5G system which is being yeah. developed by. So there is a what. Ha so what happened is uh, while this is developed standard, this just it's 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 it's, it's tough on paper. You know, right. of course you do a lot of simulations and uh, sometimes you do some uh, lab testing also, but this is not the real system. Now people, commercial co companies uh, build systems and sell them. Uh, in India too, uh, we we need to get to that point, but really are not in the same league yet in terms of having a large telecom equipment manufacturing base. So right. what uh, we did, what the government did, is to sponsor a fairly large project, even by global standards. Uh, the amount is about uh, two two for two forty crores, which is about thirty five million dollars, uh, which is large. I, we yeah. speak in the world, they'd be happy to get this kind of a project. Okay, right. and this is about a, a, we pulled in everybody in the country who could contribute to building this system end to end. Mm -hmm. 5G system, uh, eight institutions, I see, uh, academia and some R and D institutions also. Not all academic institutions. Right. And we are partnering. And we are partnering with startups. We are partnering with uh, other with some companies also, and mm -hmm. we are building completely the entire 5G system. Except the phone. Phone is something else. We are building. We are building a what's called a subscriber, fixed subscriber unit. Okay. We don't build a handset. Handset is a very different ball game to make. You can't make it in the lab. Uh, but what goes into the handset is the same thing that what goes into our fixed subscriber unit. And mm -hmm. otherwise, the equipment that uh, the focus is more on the equipment that goes on the tower and what's called the core network. So all of that we are building. When we've mm -hmm. been two years at it, this year's in one more year will be done. 
and we'll do a trial. So we will have, and we are working with startups. So I think they will take the technology and some of them will try to we'll commercialize it. So this sure. is an attempt to actually get into the manufacturing league as far as 5G is concerned. And we are mm -hmm. fairly confident of being able to do that. And some this is being supported by, by, yeah. Yeah, this is being supported by the DOT. Uh, I mean, the this government is supported entirely by the DOT. Right. The, uh, so, work on stand, the work on standardization, uh, which we yeah. have been pursuing, uh, TSI, but TSDSI is only an association, right? I mean, TSDSI has members. And again, there, the academia have been pursuing the work, actually. And uh, that has been supported a lot by the other ministry, MIT, right. in the past. So in, in simple terms, uh, one uh, the last question that I have for you here is uh, when the 5G uh, rollout happens, uh, it will be good to have Indian uh, system. Yes. Indian system, uh, which is uh, developed in India uh, by uh, the, uh, this, the kind of research project that you're doing, you just mentioned. And of course, the uh, handsets will come from uh, whichever company uh, gets uh, aligned to the system that you're developing. Is that the way to keep uh, India's uh, telecom network uh, a sovereign kind of a telecom network which is controlled by India, which does not have the uh, ability to, I mean, which, which will be secure? Uh, let me put it this way. So there's a huge security consideration that is, uh, it is always there, but it has become amplified after 4G because it's become a, such a data centric network. Right. Uh, so... Uh, the government of India has become very alive to this. And I think going forward uh, in 4G and particularly in 5G, I think we must have very strong Indian companies that make the core network and the radio network. The phones also, the phones are also important, but the phones are a consumer product. Right. So you, there's a bigger, uh, there's a different aspect to the game. But these two are uh, very uh, critical, what you might call critical infrastructure of the country. Uh, and sure. this... Of course, these are all global plays today. Nobody uh, says we'll make our own and use only our own. But I think the point is we have to have strong global play. We must have capability. And we must be able to decide when to use what, where, and where to use what. That is really the... Uh, we must not be at a loose end saying oh, we have no choice. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, the, um, uh, there is a... Um, uh, there, it's, and I think the government is, is seized with the matter, but I think it requires industry, government, everybody to work together. TSDSI, DOT, everybody, academia, private operators, uh, everybody to really uh, make this happen. And um, uh, there's no reason why it can't happen. And I think 5G is, if we don't do it during 5G, it's going to become even more difficult. And uh, there'll be too much of a data network, which is uh, insecure or it's whose security we don't control. So this is an important uh, issue. Uh, handsets is important because it's such a you know it's pro if you look at the volume of uh, the uh, amount of uh, business that the handset business is uh, you know the amount of the in dollars the volume of the handset business in India it's so large it will because it's comparable to oil and uh, right. you know, simply from an economic angle we cannot afford to be uh, just buying handsets okay but that's sure. a different uh, there's a security angle there also but more than that, I'd say it's it's also a huge economic issue. And that, of course, as you know, a lot of manufacturing is shifting to India and you have to increase the value addition in that manufacturing over time. So there has to be a very carefully um, orchestrated and curated uh, strategy. And uh, that's also important. But the network side is, is critical infrastructure. You know, networks can be brought down today uh, sure. or uh, interfered with. So that's something that we have to worry about. So therefore, the control and the uh, the security of that network which you are developing uh, is uh, critically important for uh, India's uh, you know telecom uh, infrastructure going forward. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Bhaskar Ramamurthy, for uh, giving us that uh, you know insight you. into what India what India is capable of doing and what Indians are doing. Uh, hopefully, uh, very soon. I don't know the timelines. Maybe you know it. Uh, but we will see a rollout of 5G uh, going forward and uh, a secure network made in India, uh, developed by Indians and uh, in control of India is what we are looking at, uh, I'm sure, going forward, right? Thank you very much, Nitin. Yeah, I, I, so I hope so. I think in the next two or three or four years, if we, we must have the ability to build our own secure networks. That's a very important thing. I think it's. I think that in, the, in the context of the Atmanirbhar call of the Prime Minister, I think this is very important. Excellent. Good to know that and thank you very much for your time.